putting her up in the ambulance, taking her, and then they, I don't even know what the numbers mean, but the, they said that my oxygen was down to two, and then I had to go. And I said, okay, well then, you know, then I'll just go. I mean, I didn't even, you know, it is, it is what it is, you know. So I, I went and, you know, I stayed there and they checked me and they tests and all that other kind of stuff. And then I was, you know, then they, they just released me. They said I was fine. I had to just watch myself and whatever. And I just came back, you know, I just came back home. When I came back home, it was pretty hectic here still. I mean, there was still a lot of people. And we're talking hours. They had me there for four or five hours, right? Yeah. And, uh, yeah, when I got back home, it was, they was, it was some, um, some of the people still here, the, I think the dog was still here, the, the big dog was still here. Um, oh, we put her inside. Yeah, we put her, yeah, put of course, her we put her in it was, here in the house. Though. And of course, it was hot, it was, it was Father's Day weekend, so it was, it was Over 100 and something degrees outside, you know, and, you know, we were worried about that big dog running in, in the street with burning the feet, and that's, and I'm like, carrying this thing, it had to be two and a pound golden retriever, just to, just to love this dog, and, and I'm carrying her just like, what do I do? I can't set her down. And, you know, and some of the neighbors like her feet, her feet. I'm like, I know, I, I, I'm, you know, what do I do? You know, so, you know, we, I brought her up here in the house. She wouldn't we, we, move. Yeah, she kind of sat down and wouldn't move. She was like, she like froze and we're like, come on, Daisy, come on. You gotta yeah. get, get into our house at least here. I could get her some water or something. And Brian just picked her up again and just walked her all the way to the house from a little bit down the street. So. Adrian, like, what do you think about this? I. Brian's a great man. He really is. He's a great man. He's always willing to help. The neighbors always around. Hey, Brian, can you look at this? Whether it's plumbing stuff or anything. If anything little is broken, and he's always so helpful. And besides being a wonderful husband, he's a wonderful father and just a wonderful friend. He doesn't, you know, when um, the police thing happened, he I, I wasn't there. He was there and driving, and all of a sudden he saw the policeman be in trouble. He didn't think about it, just throwing the car in park and jumping out and helping him. And I mean, that's all heart right there. You know, it's all heart for him. He's just that kind of a man, so. Was it amazing to see him get recognized the way he did from the police department? Yes, yes. I mean, it, it was supposed to be something a little bit bigger, I think, but then tragedy struck on October 1st so it got kind of pushed back and kind of a little bit of forgotten about but and um, you know he's still we were able to go down there for the first Tuesday first, first Tuesday first Tuesday they downtown. invited us down there and um, the police captain I showed you the video the police captain recognized him in front of everybody and so that was that was nice it's just it was know, originally it was um, um, and Captain Walsh, Andrew Walsh, who, uh, was the original person that I was dealing with. And you know, originally he, you know, he told me that you know they're having this big ceremony for me. It's going to be downtown. It's going to be uh, like on Fremont Street. The mayor's going to be there, and there's going to be some other people they want to shake your hand. And and uh, you know, then October first happened. I totally understand. That's it is what it is. And and I got put, you know, I got put off a little bit, which is fine. I, I didn't again. I didn't help the officer expecting anything i mean i didn't i didn't do it for that it was just another one of those things that you just you happen to be there at the yeah right i just time. happened to be there at the right time i mean i'm glad i was there to help you know and so you know the walls kept he him and i stayed in touch and you know, he emailed me i emailed him and you know hey you know anything new and all that he got promoted to the down you know a promotion he's now he's a, a captain of something else now and so he was going to do it, and then he ended up having the captain of the downtown area command do it, which again, I'm not, I mean, it is what it is. It wouldn't be really cool to shake the hands of the mayor. I mean, that would have been cool, you know. But, you know, again, I, with, the, with the police thing, I, I, didn't, I didn't do that for any recognition. It was just, I mean, You're so, to help. yeah, somebody needed help, and I'm, I'm glad I was there, and especially an officer. And it was, it was actually crazy because it was, the first two hours into his very first day of his very first solo shift, they do their, uh, I guess I was told that the officers after camp and their six week or six month thing, whatever, or not camp, but uh, academy, they're put out for one week and then they're evaluated. Well, this was day one, two hours into his very first shift solo. And he takes on a guy that was, you know, this much taller than he was that was just drug and crazed. You could just see in his face. He was drug and crazed and wielding a knife, you know. And, you know, it was just, it, that too was crazy, hectic. Uh, I, I, uh, 
You want to hear about that one? Yeah, where, where did that happen and when did that happen? Yeah, uh, last, it was last year, I was driving up uh, Bonanza, uh, heading up towards Eastern. I was coming from a, a shop down there and I was, the, the light was, was turning red. You can see the, because of the, the walk signal, you can see it was turning. So I was slowing down because I had a trailer on my, on my truck. And I, I slowed down to get to the light and just a little bit shy of the light, a car, this officer like came out of nowhere chasing this guy and then right here was a fence and I was right here and here was the light. So I, I pulled up to the light and I, I, so the cop uh, chased this guy to this fence and had him up against the fence like this and I, I saw the guy like grab the cop like this. And, you know, he had him like by the vest and the shirt and everything. At the time I didn't see the knife and I threw my truck in the park and I, I jumped out of the I jumped out of the truck real quick and I ran over there and I grabbed this guy's hand and I just like clinched it to the fence like with all my I was like Rally! you know I just all my energy just grabbed his hand off the officer and like held it up on the fence and then this this hand comes up with the knife and the officer um, was like trying to like push him up against the fence trying to con you know contain the guy and he was just moving all around but not with this hand this hand didn't move nothing and this knife comes up like this. And then the guy just goes like this on his own throat and his blood shooting everywhere. And then another guy jumps up and grabs this hand. So now there's two guys, me on this hand and, and the cops on this, you know, now has control of this guy. And then it was like, all right, we're taking him down. One, two, three. That's all I heard. I don't even know who it was. And then they just like threw the guy down. In the meantime, blood's going everywhere because the guy sliced his own throat. And then uh, the guy goes face down onto the ground and... You know, I jump onto his feet and I cross his feet and I've seen it on the TV a million times. Cross his feet and put him down like that and I sit on it like that and, and I you know hold him down like that and these guys are getting his arms and one guy kicks the knife away and our cop gets the knife away and then of course blood just just the pull of blood was just unreal. It was just coming out like this and the, the, the guy like passes out and it, out of nowhere it was like there must have been 500 cops just showed up out of I mean I don't even know where they came from. And they took the other guy out and they were cuffing him, but I stayed on his feet. Um, you know, they told the guys, I'm okay, I'll hold his feet, I'll, I'll hold his feet. And one guy came over, he's like, I got it, I got it. I was like, all right, I'm, I'm good. And then, you know, can I get up? Ready, one, two, three. And then I jumped up, you know, got up, and the other guy jumped back down. But in the meantime, they had already cuffed the guy. But uh, the ambulance showed up, and this guy was already, he was already out cold. I mean, they had, he had a little like a razor knife, but it was just like right in front of me, just he's slicing his own throat. This guy, and it was just even the cop was like, Whoa, like, whoa, and the other guy, whoa, everybody, you know. And, and I had, uh, I actually had my son in the car with me, and I had a big thing of alcohol wipes, so I grabbed that, and I'm like, Here you go, man, come on. And I'm wiping the officer's hand, and you know, he had it on his face a little bit, you know, blood and, and his shirt. He had to take his shirt off, and the other guy, too, had it on his hand, and it was just, it was just crazy. It was out of, and literally, like, I was amazed. We're at Bonanza 28th Street, just this side of Eastern, how fast that there were so many police officers. I, I, it was literally, it was uh, 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 nonstop, and there was a hundred cops there. Maybe not a hundred, but there was so many, like so fast, it was unreal, unreal. And then they, you know, they just made me stay over there. And I didn't want to leave my son because he was in the car, <coughs> and it was hot out. Yeah. So I didn't want to leave him, but they set up like a little command center thing over there. And I left my truck running with the air condition going. And, you know, the, the guys kept coming back and forth. And we were there for a little while, but I had to get going. I had to feed them. And, I mean, there was nothing more I could do. They ended up uh, taking the tape down and let me pull out. And, and they were like, oh, we'll be in contact with you. And then they, they came out here and took a recorded statement. And, and then that's, that's when it just, you know, oh, we want to, you know, we want to thank you for what you've done. And I'm like, cool. You know, and that's when... Then they were like, oh, it's going to be October. It was supposed to be like October 3rd of last year. It was supposed to be downtown on the stage, like in front of everybody. That's last year. And then that's when October 1st happened. And, of course, like I said before, I mean, it's, you know, the, what, what I did was nothing compared to that. That's, you know, I'm okay with that. But uh, I don't know. It, it, it's just, it's nice to, to help others. You know, it feels kind of good. You know, I, I truly believe that that lady is alive because of me. I, I really do. I believe that, that she, she wouldn't have survived that smoke. And nobody else was doing anything. I mean, I, the house was just, not just, it, it was already on fire, but it wasn't like 
an hour into it, it was, you know, there was smoke belling out of every, you know, every orifice of the house. And, and I, you know, ran right over. But there was still, there was neighbors. I'm not saying nothing about nobody negative. It was just, that pest guy got a cop, you know, kind of got me like, I know you don't know if there's anybody in the house or not, but you, I run out of the house and you're standing there. I mean, just out of curiosity, wouldn't you just, is there anybody in the house? Is there, can, is there anything I could do? I mean, uh, anything, you know, I don't know. And it just it was like automatic for me. I just bolted right into that thing. I, I remember um, years and years and years ago, I took a CPR training and they tell you that you don't say to a crowd of people, someone called 911, you point to someone, you call 911. And I remember um, hearing my wife say, did you guys call the, the fire department? Did you guys call the fire department? And I remember telling her, baby, you call, just call. I mean, it was, it was just one of those things. And, you know, and I remember like, I had socks in my hand because I was gonna put my shoes and socks on. We were walking out the door to go to lunch. Mm -hmm. And I ended up, uh, I don't even think, I don't even remember what happened to my socks. Because I didn't have shoes, nothing. I mean, it was just one of those things. I, I don't remember, I think I put my slippers on or something, but I, I remember like I was gonna go outside, sit down, put my shoes and socks on, you know, and then the garage door comes up and she says, oh my God, the house is on fire. You know, and that was just, it was just hysterics from that point on. It was just. Everything happened so fast. Yeah, so. it, it really Everything did. Everything happened so fast. Like, yeah. Let me ask you one question, uh, getting back to the uh, police officer. Did you get a chance to meet the officer that you... No. Um, he was supposed to be there the first time. Um, I didn't I didn't meet him. Like, I didn't see him. I didn't get to meet him that the second time when they when they actually did the, the ceremony thing. He, he wasn't there. So you haven't seen him since? No, I, I haven't seen him since, no. Did he get his name? And... I got his name it's, okay. uh, and his badge number. Um, it's on the video. They, they, and I think it's actually on the paper that they gave me, the little certificate that they gave me. They gave me a, an actual copy of the, what they read out, and I think it has his name and badge number on it. Um, Adriana, your thoughts on this whole situation, your husband springing to action to save an officer's life when he needed it most, and then your neighbor's life. Um, pretty incredible. Very incredible. It's, it's hero stuff. You know, like I said, hero stuff. I, we've been married for 10 years. And it's been nothing but wonderful ten years. And like I said, he's always willing to give you the shirt on his on his back. And well, it, it's incredible. And I think he he deserves to be recognized the way you know if, if we could this way because he really deserves it. He really does. He's a wonderful human being. Brian, is there anything else I didn't touch on that you want to add at all? No, no. That that's really it. I mean, I, I didn't. I don't think I'm anything. I mean, I just think I happen to be at the right place at the right time, both times. And, and I would hope that anybody would do what I did. I mean, it, you see a police officer that needs help, shouldn't you help him? I mean, he, he would do it for you. He wouldn't, should, you know what I mean? And the same thing with, you know, the ladies across the street, they're nice ladies. We've known them the, the whole time we've been here. And, you know, and I've worked in their home and I've helped them with, oh, this broke or that broke or, you know, my car this, the battery's dead. Or, I'm always the first person that they come to because they know I, I really don't mind. I, I really don't mind because it's, it's just my nature. I mean, I, I like to help people and I like to, you know, see that, that people succeed off of what I've helped them with. You know, she's, she's going to succeed in life because I helped her get out of the house. This officer is going to succeed in his career because his first day he didn't get stabbed. You know, he didn't get a knife to his face or his throat or something. You, you know, we, we don't know. We don't know any of what could have happened. We know what you know, what did happen, we know what the outcome is, is he's still at work and he's, he didn't get hurt and nobody got hurt and, well, the, the suspect hurt himself, but, you know, nobody else, you know, got hurt and, and we all lived to, to, to live another day, you know, and the same thing with, you know, we're, we're very animal people, we love our animals and you know, it was the same thing with running back in twice after I got her out of the house, you know, when she was in a wheelchair crying for her, her baby Ty, you know, oh, Ty, Ty, oh, he's in the house. It wasn't even like, I can't run into a burning house. It was like a dog. I got I mean, that's her baby. Yeah. I gotta go, I gotta go get, get that. You know, and, and he's a little snapper, he's a little biter. So, <laughs> you know, I ran in and I grabbed the, although I was looking around, I saw a towel. I just grabbed the towel and like threw it over him and just grabbed him, you know, and ran out the door with him like this. Like, don't bite me, don't bite me, don't bite me. Don't, just don't bite me. And, you know, I set him down and, and like, here's Ty, I got, you know, I got Ty for you. And that's when I saw the other one, I'm like, oh. Like, I'm going in again. Jeez. <laughs> wow.